Frankenstein, Mad Scientist, Book 10, Mood Science, Chapter 3. I'll bet the pepperoni buttons are good. A couple of days had passed, and Franny hadn't been able to think of anything except how mean she had been to Igor. She remembered how Igor had always supported her experiments, even when he didn't really think they were a good idea. She thought back about how earlier that week he had helped out when she tried to develop a virus that would make people feel good all the time instead of bad. I mean, think about it. Why do viruses always have to be bad? Smiles are contagious. Laughter is contagious. People should be able to catch all sorts of good things. Igor nodded in agreement, even though he had no idea what he was agreeing to. She remembered how, a few days before that, he had assisted her when she tried to develop a breed of attractive and worthful toads, so that people would want them as pets. Personally, I kind of like warts, Ferrani said, but not everybody does. And toads would be great for people to have around. They eat bugs that bother us, like flies and mosquitoes, and you know those can get in anywhere. She thought back to when he had helped her attempt to make clothes out of pizza, so that when they got dirty, you could just eat them instead of having to wash them. Actually, Igor thought this one was a terrific idea. From time to time, he enjoyed eating non-pizza clothes, especially socks. He's always been a great assistant to me, Ferrari said. I should have been nicer. I have to make this up to him. I'll do something silly to make him laugh, she said, and she got to work right away. It didn't take her very long to finish his gift. He's going to love this, she shouted, and ran to find him. Look, Igor, I wanted to apologize, so I made this for you. Igor just stared at it. It's a jigsaw puzzle with only two pieces. That way, you won't have to waste a lot of time putting the dumb thing together. Isn't that fun? Igor didn't think it was fun at all. All it did was remind him of how long he had worked on the last puzzle before Franny wrecked it. He walked away, leaving Franny holding the pieces. Fine, she said. I tried to apologize and he wouldn't accept it. Now it's your fault. She stormed off and sat down at her workbench. She fiddled around with little bits of wire and gears, hoping to get her mind off what she had done. But Franny still felt terrible. I'm afraid I've hurt his feelings so bad that he'll never forgive me, she said quietly. The platypus wanted to agree with her on this, but he knew it wouldn't go well if he did. Chapter 4 It's not you, it's me. Franny paced back and forth. She had a long list of things she wanted to work on, but she kept thinking about Igor. First, she'd get angry with herself, and then she'd come up with some silly solution, and then she'd get angry again, and then she'd start to worry about her projects. How could one little experiment cause all this trouble? she asked, pulling on her pigtails. I created much bigger problems than this before, she shouted, and none of these made me feel this way. Wait a second, Ferrani said, a thin grin crawling across her face. The problem here isn't what I did. The problem is how I feel about it. I can't work when I'm in one of these moods. She looked over at her mixer-upper machine. A little adjustment here and there, and I should be able to unmix anything. The platypus hid under a table. I'm not unmixing you, Ferrani said and a bolt of lightning cracked outside. I'm unmixing me. Chapter 5 Getting Your Feelings Out in the Open Franny finished some calculations and stepped into the mixer-upper. Phew, it still smells like a sub in here, she said. 
I should install a fan. She thrust a button and closed the door. The machine whirred and dinged. The door slowly opened. Ferrari stepped out. Did it work? She asked as she looked back into the machine. Come on out, she shouted. Come out here. Four figures stepped out. They looked somewhat familiar. They looked a little bit like Franny. What dumb idea have you had now? The angry-looking Franny snarled. It's simple. You're my feelings, and I've removed you. You are getting in the way, Franny said. Now maybe I can get something done. Angry Fran kicked a piece of lab equipment and grumbled. I could have figured that out myself, she snapped. Ferrani stepped up to a frightened-looking version of herself. Do you know who you are? Ferrani said. I'm afraid to ask, the other Ferrani said. That's right, Ferrani said. You are afraid. You're my fear. You're scaredy, Fran. Scaredy Fran gasped. Yikes! I know which feeling I am. Another one of the Ferrani lookalikes giggled. <laughs> I'm Elephant Fran. An elephant is not something you feel. Angry Fran snapped. Oh no, I'll bet if an elephant sat on you, you'd feel it. The other Ferrani said. And then she laughed and laughed. I can see that you're my silliness, Ferrani said. Your silly friend. And he wants to get rid of us? The last Fran said, with tears welling up in her eyes. That's right, sad Fran, Ferrani said. You feelings are just getting in my way. Everything goes wrong when I start feeling too much. You're so dumb, angry Fran said. You have more than four moods. We're not the only feelings in there. I know that there are more than four feelings, Ferrari said calmly. I'll do the rest later. I wasn't even sure that this would work. She pointed at the platypus. I mean, take a look at that thing. This is new technology. The platypus frowned. Ferrari closed the door on the mixer-upper and went to look over her list of projects. Wait a second. What are we supposed to do? Scaredy Fran whimpered. Your feelings, right? Franny asked them. So go do whatever you feel like. The feelings looked around the lab. They had never been on their own before. Franny waved her arms. Come on, scaredy Fran, silly Fran. Your moods, aren't you? I've heard of something called mood swings. M maybe you could go find some of those to play on. I guess I could go find something to get mad about. Angry Fran sneered. And I'm sure I can find something miserable to enjoy, sad Fran said, sighing. Yes, you can all go find things that interest you, Franny said impatiently. When should we be back? Scaredy Fran whined. I don't think I'll ever need you back, so how does never o'clock sound? Just stay out of my way and stay out of trouble. I have a whole long list of projects I can finally complete without you pests slowing me down. And with that, her feelings went off to do whatever they felt like.